is not able to be on with us because we are still missing about four or five people. All right, I would ask that you please um, leave the chat um, off. So we're not chatting in the sidebar while we're reading, um, unless I get ask a question and you guys want to answer. That is fine. Um, all right, I'll go ahead and get this going. Let's see if my, oops, I think I just muted my camera. Miss I. All right, here we go. We, when we left, um, let's see, when we left, they had just gotten in trouble with Mr. Fitzwallace, Dr. Fitzwallace, about the band room incident. And now we're going to see how the reaction is from all the students, what's going on. So, all right, folks. Um, hold on just a second. I need to see this. Okay, I think I've got it. Include myself in the grid. Okay, there we go. I'm gonna pin my camera here. Oh, I need to move this down a little bit so you guys can see better. All right, here we go. <clears throat> when I arrive at school the next morning, Miss DeLeo is waiting for me at my locker. You found out what happened, I conclude. I'll apologize to Brendan, Joel, and Kimmy when I see them at video club. She shakes her head sadly. I'm sorry, Chase. You're not a part of the club anymore. Maybe I'm stupid, but that really catches me by surprise. Nobody told you I, I didn't do anything wrong. Suddenly there's a bowling ball in my throat and I can't seem to clear it away. I spoke to the Webbers on the phone last night, she tells me. Joel's okay, but the family is pretty rattled considering that the injury came from you. What about Brendan? I press. He knows I'm innocent. I had a talk with him too. He's not sure about your role, but the word innocent never came up. She shoots me a penetrating gaze, and it doesn't help that you backed up the story that your two friends spun about an electrical fire. My heart sinks. She's right about that. I signed on to the lie to save my own skin, but I never thought about how it would look to the video club kids. They know there was no fire. They've all been waiting for the old me to show up, and I delivered. So they kicked me out, I say. She shakes her head. That decision was mine. I'm really sorry, Chase. You were doing so well. Warrior is the best middle school project I've ever seen. I think of Shoshana. I can only imagine how mad she must be. <sighs> Don't worry, Miss Leo, I say, surprised at how hard it is to keep my voice steady. I'll stay away. It bugs me. But what really bugs me is how much it bugs me. What do I care that a bunch of video dweebs don't want me in their club? I bring myself up short. Video dweebs. That's what Aaron and Bear call them. As upset as I am, I'm not going to stoop low enough to use their words. I blame myself for the mess I'm in. But mostly I blame those two. Speaking of Aaron and Bear, they're acting like everything is beyond awesome between us. Funny. I found a way to give them a pass for a lot of rotten stuff, including maybe even stealing a war hero's medal. But what I can't forgive them for turns out to be something I did all by myself. I protected them because it was the only way to protect myself. The cost turned out to be one video club, plus the way I feel every time Aaron or Bear refers to me as our boy. I start taking weird detours all through the halls just to avoid running into them. My one consolation is this is a short day for me. Dad's picking me up at 11 and taking me to my appointment with Dr. Nguyen, the sports medicine specialist. At least it spares me lunch at the football table. I won't be eating with the video crowd anytime soon. Is it possible to lose your appetite for an entire school year? I spot Brendan a couple of times, but when he sees me, he quickly turns away. I catch a glimpse of Shoshana, scorching me with a look that would melt titanium. I don't think Joel's even at school. Dr. Nguyen re-enters the exam room and beams at me. Well, young man, I've got some good news and some better news. The good news is you exhibit no lingering concussion symptoms, and you're fit as a fiddle in every way. The better news is I'm signing the medical form, authorizing you to return to the football team with no restrictions. Congratulations. Gee, what a surprise. Dad searched and searched and found a doctor who would clear a dead man to go out there and, I, and get tackled and only 60 miles away. So they drove 60 miles to find a doctor that would say Chase is okay to play football. Kind of tells you how much his dad cares about the football and not maybe about Chase's health. 
As we drive home in the Stang, Dad rails against brain-dead Cooperman, who kept me off the gridiron for no real reason. Dr. Cooperman has a diploma from Harvard Medical School in his office, I tell him. I didn't see a diploma on Dr. Nguyen's wall. Dad snorts him to the wheel. <laughs> Just because he isn't one of those Ivy League snobs doesn't mean he isn't as legit as they come. This is great news, champ. You're back on the team. His brow darkens, and maybe those stumble bums will start winning again once you're out there. In three weeks, I remind him, school rules, one week of non-contact uh, practice, and then two weeks in full pads before I can play in a real game. Just in time for a late season playoff run, Dad chortles. I'm not happy about my triumphant return to football, and it isn't only because of Dr. Nguyen who would have signed a paper certifying I was pregnant with triplets if my father had paid him enough. It's not the medical part that bothers me. I know I'm fine. Dr. Cooperman pretty much said so himself. I'm even interested in the game and excited to see if I can be as good as everybody says I used to be. The part I don't like is that, old, that football me is the old me, and I don't want to be that guy anymore. Look at how fast my preamnesia instincts kicked in the minute Aaron and Bear jammed me up yesterday. But really, what choice do I have except the Hurricanes? I'm kicked out of video club, and I lost every one of the friends I made there. Things are finally turning around for you, champ, my father goes on. But maybe not the way I want them to, I complain. Why, because a bunch of sissies are ticked off at you? He doesn't understand why the video club thing hurts so much. I'm not sure I understand it myself. It isn't just the kids. Ms. DeLeo was the one who kicked me out. Teachers, <laughs> Dad snorts. They have to slap you on the wrist to make it look like they're in charge. You'll notice you're not banned from the football team, and neither are your buddies, Aaron and Bear. When I played, I had the whole faculty wrapped around my little finger. Sure, they threw me a detention every now and then to make it look good, but after the state championship, I called the shots in that school. For the first time, I say it out loud. Aaron and Bear might not be my buddies anymore. Aw, oh, come on, champ. Don't be that way. He beams at me. First that mess with the Weber kid, and then the accident. It feels like it took forever to get the whole chase back. Don't tell your mother, but I'm proud of the way you handled Joel. You made your statement, that's for sure. I don't bother to point out that I wasn't making a statement with Joel. It looks more like my buddies Aaron and Bear were making a statement with me. And all it took was a sick imagination and a lot of fire extinguisher foam. By the time we get back to Hiawassee, it's 2.30. No sense bothering to go to school. Dad drops me off at making me promise to report to football practice with my newly signed medical form promptly uh, at four. And I will, not because I want to, but because I'm too depressed to resist. Unhappiness sucks all the energy out of a guy. Upstairs in my room, I gaze out the window at the shingles of the sloping roof. For a weird instant, I actually remember sitting out there when I wanted to be alone with my thoughts. Or... Maybe it's not a memory at all, but something I'm imagining, because I've been told so many times that's what I used to do. On a wild impulse, I raise the window and swing a leg over the sash. Carefully, really carefully, I crawl out there. I'm expecting to be terrified after what happened. Actually, though, I'm pretty comfortable on the gently sloping shingles. It even feels familiar. It's not a flashback, exactly. Still, it has to come from my lost past. I definitely haven't been here lately. I swore to mom that I'd never go out on the roof again, but she's at work now and never is a long time. To my amazement, my body arranges itself into the position I'm told I used to prefer. Bum planted, knees bent, feet flat on the shingles. It's a different kind of memory, muscle memory. Amnesia can't touch it. Um, muscle memory is when you do something automatically, your body does it automatically because you've done it so many times or it's just, it's not um, hard for your body to remember it. It's kind of like our fire drills. Remember how I said we wanted to have, um, we wanted to practice those fire drills so much that if it was a real fire uh, emergency, we automatically do everything that we need to do. That's what I'm talking about. It's muscle memory. It's something like that. I understand why I liked it up here. It's peaceful and private. The town is all around, but I'm above it, so nothing can reach me. I see the school and the football field I'll be on in a couple of hours. Not far away, a work toward downtown, is the park, Portland Street residence where Mr. Solway lives. And there's the park where we filmed Leaf Man. Just the thought of it brings the bowling ball back to my throat. That's the last time I'm ever going to get to work on one of Brendan's crazy videos. Dad says the old chase is back. I wanted that once. 
But right now, the new chase is the life I'd rather have. And I've lost that too. Chapter 22, Shoshana Weber. I must be the stupidest person in the history of the world. I get straight A's in school, but obviously that doesn't mean anything. All it proves is I know how to study for a geography test. As a judge of character, I'm an F minus. I let that jerk, the alpha rat, do me into believing he was different, that he was a nice guy. Well, a leopard never changes his spots. And that goes double for a scheming low life like Chase Ambrose. Okay, I'm gonna let you go ahead and uh, talk in the chat for a second. What does a leopard never changes his spots mean? This is actually called an idiom. Um, it's a turn of phrase where they don't literally mean what they're saying. They're not saying, okay, here's a leopard who's changing his spots off. So what do they mean by um, a leopard never changes his spots? Go ahead and put in the chat what you think. Yep. Gabe's got it. Somebody, somebody never changes. Hannah, very good. It means that they don't change. Ava, good, good. Gabe, I think we've got your answer. Thanks, bud. Leopard never lies. Interesting. Okay, they don't change. Yeah, you're absolutely right, folks. When they say a leopard never changes its spots, those are things that, that a leopard can't control. That's, that's things that a leopard's not going to change. Those spots are going to be with them for the rest of their life. Very good. So my question to you, thank you for your answers. You're all, all absolutely right. Yes, the answers are, the messages are recorded, Gabe. Yes. You guys are all right. That is exactly what that means. And so I want you to think. Do you think that Chase is like that leopard? Do you think that he's not someone who changed? Think about that as we read this. Good stuff. Thank you very much. We'll go ahead and stop chatting at this point. Appreciate it. Uh, let's see. Falling off a roof, having amnesia, big deal. It doesn't mean you're not a rotten person today just because you can't remember being one yesterday. I can't even face my poor brother. And not just because his eye looks like it sustained a direct hit from a cannonball. It's all my fault. I'm the one who told my parents that the coast was clear and it was safe for Joel to come home. And I ended up bringing him back into the same line of fire that almost broke his spirit last year. I could kick myself, except for the fact that my toes are pointing in the wrong direction. I can't get anything right. It isn't just that Chase has gone back to his bullying ways. It's that first he convinced everybody he was a new person. And we went for it, hook, line, and sinker. Not just me, but the video club, the teachers, Dr. Fitzwallace, the whole school. That must have been his plan all along, to lull us into a false sense of security before pouncing one more time. What a plan it was to ruin Brendan's video, wreck the music room, attack Joel, and blame the whole thing on an imaginary fire. <sighs> Chase was behind it from the very beginning. From a strategy standpoint, you almost have to admire it. It sure succeeded with flying colors. And Joel has the colors to prove it, black and blue mostly. So she's talking about the bruises. I wish I could take my video project and flush it down the toilet. I'd rather lose all that time and throw away the best work I've ever done than have anything linking my name to Chase Ambrose. Compared to what's happened to my brother, the National Video Journalism Contest is about as meaningful as counting snowflakes in a blizzard. That's another reason to hate myself, that I would let my ambition to win a lousy contest make me so blind. I never should have allowed myself to be pushed into partnering up with Chase, no matter what Brendan and Mr. Leo said. I don't care that the project is on a really great and interesting guy. It wouldn't make any difference if we got an interview with all the signers of the Declaration of Independence, brought back to life and reformed into a boy band. It just isn't worth it. For the smartest kid in school, Brendan's even dumber than I am. He's got it in his thick head that there's a chance Chase might be innocent. I don't know, Shoshana, he insists. It was Aaron and Bear who busted up the shoot. Chase could have been trying to stop them. Oh, sure, I return. And he just happened to show up at exactly the right moment. He didn't show up, he argues. I sent Kimberly to get him. Joel said you didn't send her for Chase. They did. There was a lot going on he admits. It's hard to remember. I think they sent her first, and then I did. Why couldn't you go yourself? Because I was stuck in the tuba, he replies, as if it's the most natural thing in the world. Happens to everyone, right? Listen, I tell him. 
My poor brother has a technicolor face, courtesy of the guy you say might be innocent. That could have been an accident. A tug of war with the fire extinguisher. Maybe Chase was trying to protect Joel. I roll my eyes. Let him protect somebody else. When it came time to lie his way out of the blame, he was right there with Aaron and Bear. That's all the proof I need. I know what it looks like, he agrees reluctantly. But doesn't Chase deserve the benefit of the doubt? Listen, I challenge. If what you say is true, then Aaron and Bear set him up and nearly got him kicked out of school. And where is he this very minute? football practice with the same Aaron and Bear who should be his worst enemies. What does that tell you? Well, it's not like he can come to video club anymore. And in the cafeteria, I persist. Who does he eat lunch with? The football team. We won't let him at our table. We're protecting Joel. That's the real meaning of protection. Not cold cocking someone with a fire extinguisher. I'm so mad at that jerk and you should be too. He's like a cobra. He lured us in until we trusted him and then he struck. And now he's slithered back to his old life as if nothing happened. Joel may be the one who's bleeding, but the attack was on all of us. And he agrees. Brendan knows I'm right, however much he wants to convince himself that Chase is innocent. The whole club knows that we're better off without a guy like that. So how come his name keeps popping up again and again in our meetings? That camera look work looks a little shaky. You've got to keep it smooth like Chase. Yeah, that's a cool shot. It was Chase's idea to film the worm's eye view. The kid's a mumbler, but you can hear the audio clearly because Chase lay on the floor and held a microphone just out of the frame. Can we please stop talking about Chase Ambrose? I explode. He's not a god. He's just a person and a lousy person at that. He belongs on the football team with the other muscle heads. Actually, he belongs chained to a slab of concrete at the bottom of the Marinas, Mar Marianas Trench. But I'll take the football team if it gets him away from us. Joel has been silent throughout all this. Now he speaks up. Am I the only one who's noticed that Video Club has gotten kind of lousy? What are you saying? I demand. He shrugs. We all watched Warrior. It's fantastic. Nobody's doing that kind of work anymore. I'm furious. You think that's because we don't have him? My brother looks at me with his one good eye. Just because I hate Chase Ambrose doesn't mean I fall to pieces every time someone mentions his name. Go ahead. Talk about him. I can handle it. This isn't last year. No matter what, I'm not going to be chased out of town again. We slap him on the back and pound his shoulder. A few of us even cheer. It almost reminds me of the football team, although I'd never admit it. Ms. DeLeo gives him a big hug. Maybe I can stop beating myself up for getting mom and dad to bring him home from Melton. The very worst happened, and he's okay. I look at my little brother, 14 minutes younger than me. He's growing up. Last chapter. Well, not last chapter of the book, but last chapter for today. Chapter 23, Chase Ambrose. At football practice, when everybody else is laboring. Oops. Are we having problems with the, the chat? Gabe's, Gabe, we're not doing chats, bud. Thank you, friends, for those of you who have, have been trying to um, help out and say that we should not be on the chat. Thank you. Gabe's going to stop. Thanks. At football practice, when everybody else is laboring under a ton of equipment and you're breezing through the drills and shorts and a t-shirt, you're not the most popular guy on the field. All around me, the gridiron resounds with crunching tackles, oofs, and grunts of pain, but I'm immune to that. No contact for the first week of my comeback, middle school rules. My teammates managed to see to it that I suffered just the same. Around the Gatorade bucket, I dr no drink in my hand makes it as far as my mouth. It's pretty clear the other players have determined that I'm not going to not going to get so much as a sip as long as my special treatment holds up. Every time I've got a full cup, someone manages to jostle my elbow until the contents spill down my leg and into my cleats. It's been going on for three days now. I'm borderline dehydrated, and when I walk, my wet pants create squishing noises. Hey, Pink! Coach Davenport calls, referring to the fruit color, fruit punch color of my lower body. Get out there and catch some passes! I have no memory of what practice is supposed to be like, but I don't complain about the treatment and focus so I'm doing my job. I guess football, playing football is like riding a bicycle. You never really forget how. I run hard, and after a couple of days, the cuts and jukes come back to me. More muscle memory. I make a few good grabs, and I can feel the guy's attitude thawing a little. Nice catch, Captain, Landon tells me with a slap where my shoulder pad would be if I was wearing one. I guess I'm still the captain. I didn't forfeit that by having amnesia. Yeah, good to have you back, bud. 
adds Joey in a tone that could almost be interpreted as friendly. I tried to turn this development to my advantage. Can I have a drink now? He laughs. <laughs> Bathroom's in the field house, newbie. I hadn't thought of that. Pretty soon I'm in there, bent over the sink, guzzling water from the tap. It's better than drinking out of the toilet, which is probably what Joey had in mind. It takes a while, but Landon finally explains that this is standard procedure for anyone who's on non contact. As soon as I'm getting tackled like everybody else, my Gatorade privileges will be restored. Football. Here's a surprise. I like it. That means everything didn't change when I fell on my head. It proves that you can be an athlete and a video club kid at the same time. Not in my case, obviously. Video club invited me to get lost, but it's possible to be both. I have no idea why more people don't do it. Maybe it's because the jocks will never find out if they enjoy doing something artsy because they'll never try it. And the arts kids feel the same way about sports. In spite of everything that's happened, I'm getting the hang of most of the Hurricanes. They're a rowdy crew, and sometimes the physical nature of the game spills over into the way they treat other kids, which is definitely not right. But they're giving me a chance, which is more than I can say for video club these days. I'm starting to see how I could have been friends with the players, with two exceptions. Aaron and Bear finally have what they wanted. My name is Mud with my new friends, and I'm back on the team. But if they expect us to be the Three Musketeers again, they can forget it. They couldn't stand to see me making a life for myself that didn't include them, so they wrecked it for me. And in the process, they managed to retarget poor Joel, who hasn't even been home for two weeks yet. And that's not including the way they treat the residents at Portland Street. But the last straw was when they cornered me, so I had no choice but to lie to Dr. Fitzwallace to protect the three of us. Aaron's always lecturing me about friendship. He doesn't know the meaning of the word. I don't talk to them. I don't stretch next to them. In the locker room, I sit so far away from them that I'm practically out in the hall. When we're on the practice field for the same drill, they get no chatter from me, not even any eye contact. The other Hurricanes have started to notice, but they think it's funny. Aaron and Bear don't. And how much do I care about hurting their delicate feelings? Psh, well, you could fit that inside the nucleus of a carbon atom. So very little bit. On Friday, Coach Davenport runs us through a quick workout. The Hurricanes have a night game tomorrow, and he wants everybody fresh but sharp. Since I won't be playing, he keeps me out on the field while the others clatter into the locker room. Ten laps, Pink, he calls. No dog in it. The others are laughing at me and calling out mock encouragement, the revenge for my week of no pads. To show off, I kick into high gear and sprint down the sideline. One thing that's come out of this first week of practice, I've gotten really fast. None of my teammates are very impressed because apparently I was always this fast. But it's news to me. And these days, I need something to make me feel good about myself. When the tackle comes, it's a complete shock. One second, I'm running free, and the next, a big body hits me just below the knees, knocking my legs out from under me and sending me hurtling forward. I must somersault because I see a quick panorama of sky and grass. The earth comes up to clobber me. I think I eat some of it. Gasping, I roll over. A helmeted figure is blocking out the sun. Number 57, Bear. Aaron stands beside him, applauding. How's that for non-contact? Bear spits. I don't answer. I can't. The wind is totally knocked out of me. I just lie there, wheezing. Oops, he goes on, fake apologetic. I think that might have been contact. It's so confusing with you lately, Ambrose. You're a friend. You're an enemy. You're a teammate. You're a video dork. You've got amnesia. He grabs me by the fabric of my t-shirt and hauls me to my feet. Or maybe you remember more than you let on. I've got no pads on, I choke, finding a breath at last. You want to kill me? It could happen, you know, and you'd get more than community service for that. We had to get your attention, man, Aaron informs me solemnly. You've barely said a word to us all week. Don't worry, we won't harm a hair on your little head, Bear adds. Not until we get square. Get square? I don't know if I've ever been so mad. Aren't we square yet? All my friends hate my guts because they think I set up what happened in the band room. Aaron grins. It wasn't too hard to convince them either. I guess we're not the only ones who figured out that the new Chase is a phony dude. What are you talking about? I sputter. You never had any M. accuses harshly. You faked the whole thing. Are you crazy? I demand. What's so fantastic about forgetting your whole life that anybody would fake it? I didn't even know my own mother. Well, for one thing, Bear returns readily, you can act like you have no clue what you owe us. I owe you nothing, I see. The fact that I used to be friends with you guys makes me sick. If you think you can push me around the way you do everybody else, think again. 
There's still enough of the old chase left to take you on. You're lucky I don't go straight to the cops and rat you out for swiping Mr. Solway's medal. They stare at me in surprise. I can feel the advantage shifting to me so I don't let up. Yeah, geniuses, I figured that out by watching you prowling the halls of Portland Street, taking advantage of the people you're supposed to be helping. Give me credit for having the brains to see who's sleazy enough to steal from a war hero who's too frail to look after his stuff. Bear is still staring, but slow understanding is dawning on Aaron. You, you really do have amnesia, he tells me. Yeah, so? So you don't remember. We didn't jack that metal. You did. Rage floods through me, and I rear back my fist to take a swing at him. Before I can act, though, the memory flashes in my brain. The triangular case on the dresser, flipped open to re reveal the gleaming five-pointed medal of honor at the end of its blue star-spangled ribbon. The hand reaches down for it. My hand. I'm totally appalled, yet it makes perfect sense. Aaron and Bear are the worst people I know, but they weren't always a twosome. They had a ringleader, Chase Ambrose. And in those days, if they were low, he was lower. Even before the memory returned, I should have known I did it. Bear's words break into my horrified thoughts. That's right, Boy Scout. This one's on you. You didn't even wait till the old Dumbledore was out of the room. As soon as his back was turned, you snatched it and tossed the case in the closet. It's worth big money, and you owe us our share. Three-way split. That was our deal, Aaron confirms. If we were sentenced to the Greybeard Motel, at least we were going to get something out of it. I, I don't have it. Bear's brow darkens. Don't lie, man. I saw you jam it in your pocket and walk out of the building. No, I all but whisper. I mean, I might have it, but I don't know what I did with it. And if I do find it, it's going back to Mr. Solway. Maybe I used to be a crook, but I'm not one anymore. Aaron steps forward. Fine. You're better than us now. You're a saint. But when you took that medal, that was the old you and the old rules. So it belongs to all three of us. You can't do anything without our okay, and we don't give it. He looks totally serious like a lawyer reading a contract. You make a move without us, and you'll regret it, Bear adds threateningly. I regret I ever met you guys, I shout, hoarse with emotion. I wheel away from them and flee for home, not even stopping in the locker room to shower and change. I have to put as much distance as possible between myself and these two. As I run, hot tears of shame are streaming down my face. Since my accident, I've heard a lot about the person I used to be. Never did I imagine this. I sprint harder, accelerating onto the sidewalk, outpacing even the most intense drills from practice. It's no problem escaping Aaron and Bear, but I'll never be able to get away from myself. That's the end of the chapter, agents. So we just found out that the person who actually took Mr. Solway's medal was Chase himself. What do you think that he's done with the medal? Don't answer. Don't answer in the chat. Don't turn on your mics. I want you to think about this. What do you think he's done with the medal? Where is it? Why doesn't he remember taking it? That's interesting stuff. So um, I'm going to be posting a Google Classroom um, question for... Um, the, um, the, the chapters that we read. And please keep in mind, you guys did a great job yesterday with Mrs. Uh, Johnson about the wraps. So restating the question, restate the topic, answering the question, um, provide specific details, and then sum it up. I want you guys to have a good quality answer on our Google Classroom. It should be posting at 1045. So you've got about 14 minutes. This video is going to be posted to our YouTube channel, and I'll also post it to Google Classroom as well for people to watch it, okay? All right, kiddos. Thanks so much for joining. If you have any questions on the assignments, this is the time you can go ahead and unmute your microphone and ask them, and we'll, we'll go ahead. Hi. Now remember, we're asking questions. Not just going to hype each other. Thank you. Oh, wait, so. Does anyone have questions? Um, if you have a question, you should have yours unmuted. I don't know the question to Edge Elastic. There's a problem on there. I just, on question 10, it's just really hard. Hey, it, those questions are part of a test. Like right here. Oh, wait, oh, wait, I just forgot I did it. Oh, right. I, hey. I have a question, though. Oh. 
Why did I forget to stop? It's a test, and we don't want we want to make sure that we are not um, giving away answers and things like that. So, would you please?